And since that there is no standard diet that could um, cooperate with the exercises and how to uh, build our strong tendons through nutritional intervention or what supplements to take after training can enhance yeah. affect our exercise. Yeah, again, it's a great question. So, so when we're looking to supplement to support our nutritional, our, our exercise, you know, we can talk about in, in an athlete, the way that they do it is when they have a hard exercise day, they add more carbohydrates to their diet. When they have an easier day where they're not going as hard, they shrink that. So what you're doing is you're, you're playing with how much of the starches, how much of the rice or the pasta or the, or the potatoes that you have in your diet. But none of those things really have anything that's going to help our connective tissues, where they don't have all of the things that we really want for our connective tissues. And for most, in most cultures and in most, um, in most people, we tend to stay away from things that uh, are really beneficial for our connective tissues. So when you think about it, it's a lot of the stuff that you that you know when you're cutting off. When you have, again, a steak, we call a gristly steak, one that's hard to chew. That's all of those little white bits of stuff that's in there, not the fat, but the other stuff that's in there. It's really chewy and you can never break it down. That's the, that's the connective tissue or the, or the collagen within the, within the steak. And most of us, we don't like to do that anymore. So we get a, a, nice, a nice, really tender piece of meat where there's no connective tissue in it. And that's really one of the reasons why people are now finding that they can see benefits when they bring back some of the things that we've taken out of the diet. And so when people are eating things like, um, uh, like dietary collagen, what they're doing is they're actually trying to replace something that over the years we've taken out as we've gotten a little bit more picky in what we eat especially in kids like when so what do you do you get her the the pieces of meat that don't have any of those things that are making it chewy but that also means she's missing out on all of those nutrients all of those amino acids that are within those connective tissues so we add back dietary collagen and so what we do is gelatin if people like to take it as a food stuff um again different different cultures have different um, have different uh, aspects of that. So it's the skins or the tendons that that uh, are within the uh, within what you're eating. So it's going to be from animals, and a lot of it is coming. A lot of the dietary collagen comes from the pelts of say of of pork or beef or from fish skin as well. And so what we do is we take you can take that. You can do it yourself. You can boil it down and you can make a soup from a carcass. So if I take a chicken and I, I've got only the bones and the skin and I put it into a pot and I, I cook it and I get that layer of, of stuff that's like jello -y at the top, that's our dietary collagen. So that's a great, that's one way that we can get it. Or we can get it um, as a powder as in gelatin or hydrolyzed collagen. And what we show is that when people eat about 15 to 20 grams of that together with a good source of vitamin C, what we find is that they're able to increase the production of collagen. So your body makes more collagen. So does that mean that it is not a good idea to be a vegetarian? Well, <laughs> it's hard to be a vegetarian. And we're actually right now in the middle of, a, of an experiment where we're testing um, one of the, there's two uh, forms of dietary collagen that aren't, uh, that are vegetarian appropriate. And so what they are is they're made in, they're made recombinantly. So they're made in little bacteria that have been given the gene for human or for, for animal collagen. And what they do is they produce collagen and, and they get, they put it into the, this vat. And then you can take the, the liquid out of there and you can isolate the collagen and people are, uh, and companies are now producing this as a dietary source. The question is whether that's going to, be enough in people to stimulate collagen synthesis. We don't know yet, but we'll be able to tell them soon. But what we do know is that if people are eating a, 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 a diet that has got no animal sources of, of protein, 
that they will be deficient in certain things that, that make it difficult for them to synthesize sufficient amounts of or sufficient amounts of collagen if they're training at a high level. If you're just going through your day, you're going to be pretty good. As you get older, what we see is our rate of collagen synthesis declines with age. And so that means that what happens is that the collagen that we make actually stays in those places for longer. So the way that we'll notice this, our skin is a little bit less plump. We'll see it as wrinkles that appear. We'll see it as the same exercises that we used to do. Now, maybe we're getting a little stiffer. We go to sit down, we make those old people noises like, Ugh, because we're, we're feeling more of the stiffness within our system because when we don't make as much collagen, in order for us to have enough collagen, what we do is we slow the breakdown. So it stays around for longer and that the longer it stays there, the stiffer it gets. So it's important for us to reach a balance in our diet. Absolutely, now, we wanna... Now let's go back to the topic of strength and exercise. Um, is endurance training or strength training better for our anti-aging enthusiast and why? Yes, so that's, a, that's, that's, the, that's the great question. Um, so a lot of it depends on who you are and what your family has a history of. So for me, I know that my family has a history of cardiovascular disease. So my, my father is the first person who is uh, first man in my family to live past the age of 60 something. So, and in order, and to do that, he had to have a quadruple bypass. So cardiovascular disease runs in my family. I know that strength is super important for cardiovascular disease. We all think, oh, cardiovascular disease, we should do cardiovascular exercise. But if you go back to the early studies that, um, that Morris did where they first started realizing that exercise was good at preventing heart, uh, heart attacks or dying from heart attacks. What he did in his, his famous study was looking at the, the bus drivers in London versus the ticket takers who would go up and down the stairs all day long. And the ticket takers who went up and down the stairs had didn't die of a heart attack as frequently as the people who sat all day and, and drove the bus. Then he did a second experiment where he did heavy exercise versus light exercise. And the ones that did heavy exercise, and for him, that was machinists who are lifting things and moving things. And the light exercise, that was post people, that was male people. So that was people taking letters and walking all day long. So the ones who walked all day long actually died sooner from cardiovascular disease than the ones who are lifting all day. And there's also a study from, um, from Scandinavia where they looked to see how much longer your life would be, they looked at people who commuted by bike. And if their bike commute was short, moderate, or long, there was no benefit to being a long biker in longevity. But if they looked to see how fast you went, the ones who were going super fast on their commute, they actually had about a five-year increase in longevity. So for cardiovascular disease, I want to have both strength and endurance because the endurance is good, helps me with my heart. But when I do strength exercise, that actually challenges my heart in a way that's really, really important. And what that is, is that increases my blood pressure for a short period of time. So that now when my heart contracts, it has to contract more forcefully. And it practices contracting forcefully when I'm lifting weights. And when it does that, it actually builds a bigger muscle. Just like our arms would build a bigger muscle when we lift the heavy weight, our heart does it the same way. And that's really important for keeping our heart working well. If I have um, a lot of dementia in my family, so my, my wife has a oh. family history of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, it's not great. But knowing that, what we understand is that when we do endurance exercise, we're gonna get more mitochondria in our muscle. When we get more mitochondria in our muscle, we also get those enzymes that take those neurotoxins away. And that's really good for brain activity. In fact, there's a beautiful study in, from Sweden where they took 100,000 people, 100,000 young men, and they looked to see, is there a relationship between endurance and intelligence? What they found is there was a linear relationship that the more aerobically fit you were, the higher you scored on intelligence tests. 
And we see that simple endurance exercise has a massive effect on brain function. It's really, really important. And then if you have people who have uh, a long or have cancer in their family, again, that's where strength is really important as well, because as I said early, you're one quarter as likely to die from cancer if you're in the strongest third. And really one of the interesting things that not many people understand is that 30% of the people who die from cancer are actually dying from the muscle mass loss and weakness that they call cachexia that's associated with the cancer. They're not dying from the disease itself. They're actually dying from the weakness and the loss of mobility and the, and the infirm that come and the frailty that comes with losing their muscle mass and strength. So again, depending on, and those are the three biggest things that are leading to, you know, shortened lifespans. You know, diabetes is slowly coming up. And again, diabetes is gonna be more endurance. The brain function, more endurance. The heart is gonna be a combination of strength and endurance, but a little bit more on the strength. And then the, the, the cancer is going to be, again, one where we focus more on the strength. 